Super Smash Brothers is the biggest gaming crossover of all time, and with over 40 different franchises making up this amazing series, there's bound to be something you don't know. So today, let's take a look at 100 Smash Brothers facts that you probably don't know. In Donkey Kong's official artwork for Smash 64, the DK letters are flipped on his tie. The expectations for Smash Brothers were low, and Nintendo had no intentions of localizing it for an international release. But after success in Japan, Nintendo decided to release it worldwide. Charles Martinet's name was misspelled in Smash 64's credits. The prototype for Smash 64 was called Dragon King The Fighting Game. The prototype fighters would later go on to become Captain Falcon. All characters except for Captain Falcon use their head as their stock icon. Captain Falcon uses a falcon. Although Pikachu was the best character in Smash 64, he was actually even better in the Japanese version, being nerfed for international releases. When announcing Metal Mario, the announcer's voice has a metallic effect. A poll was run in Japan shortly after the release of Smash 64, asking fans what characters they'd like to see appear in future games. Of the top 10, 7 have made it into future games. The three characters from the poll yet to have been added are Toad, Mew, and, uh... James Bond. Yeah, I don't see that happening. In the Japanese version of Smash 64, the fighting polygon team is actually called the Dummy Corps. The only characters in Smash 64 without a stage based on their series are Captain Falcon and Ness. In an early version of Smash 64, Saffron City's roof was pink and purple. In Smash 64 and Melee, Luigi's dash attack's final hit does no knockback. 64's fighters are placed in chronological order from oldest to newest, with Mario and Donkey Kong being the oldest and Pikachu being the newest. The unlockable characters were added very close to the end of development, leading many of their animations and moves to be quite similar to other fighters. There is a draw game sound effect in the files of Smash 64, leading some to assume sudden death wasn't added until very late in development. In Mushroom Kingdom stage, there's actually a danger sign on the left and right sides of the castle warning the players of the stage's boundary. This was also the case in Melee. Yoshi only has four selectable costumes in 64, but two more can actually be seen in single player mode. Samus and Jigglypuff are the only female fighters in Smash 64. Only 12 characters have appeared in all five games. These are Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, Samus, Yoshi, Kirby, Fox, Pikachu, Luigi, Ness, Captain Falcon, and Jigglypuff. They're called the original 12. Mushroom Kingdom is the only unlockable stage in Smash 64. In Melee, there's a glitch that allows you to play as Master Hand. It involves plugging your controller into port 3 and then doing a glitch to bypass the stage selection screen to go straight into the game. All players that have not chosen a fighter will automatically be set to Master Hand, and he's only playable through port 3. The game will eventually crash, but it's super fun to mess around with this and control Master Hand. By pressing X, Y, or B on your controller before the result screen appears in Melee, you can actually choose which victory animation your character does. The original Melee box art did not include Link or Pikachu. It was just Mario and Bowser. There's a battle bonus called Switzerland, where all you need to do is not attack or get attacked. Marth and Roy were originally just going to be Japanese exclusive fighters in Melee, but were added in to promote Fire Emblem's release in the West. Smash Bros. Melee actually came out before Roy's debut in Fire Emblem The Blinding Blade, which means Roy's the first and only character to debut in a Smash game. Smash Bros. Melee was the last game in the series to be made by HAL Laboratories before Sakurai's departure in 2003. By performing a short down taunt on a Star Fox stage while using a Star Fox character, a secret conversation taunt will appear that will be different for every single character in the game. In it, multiple Star Fox characters enter the call to talk about the player's opponent. A similar easter egg is also there for Snake and Pit from Metal Gear Solid and Kid Icarus respectively. Ditto was supposed to be in Melee but was taken out at the end of development. Luigi's side B attack is called the Green Missile, and has an even more powerful attack called a Misfire. The chance of the Misfire occurring anytime you use the attack is a 1 in 8 chance in Melee and Brawl, and a 1 in 10 chance in Smash 4 and Ultimate. Daisy's trophy in Melee has a random floating third eye on the side of her head. Sakurai's wife, Michiko Sakurai, designed the menus for most of the games in the series. Luigi's voice is just Mario's voice pitched up. Smash Melee was developed in just 13 months, so many ideas and features were left out due to time constraints. Wario, Snake, and Sonic were all considered for Melee, but were ultimately not included due to these time constraints. 
A Player Smash was also thought of, but was not included due to hardware limitations. Mr. Game & Watch actually breaks All-Star Mode. By spamming the hammer move and hoping for a 7 in the rest area, you can actually get some food which will be able to heal Game & Watch. Given the rest area has no time limit and you can spam side B until your heart's desire, it's possible to fully heal yourself before every battle in All-Star Mode, something that was definitely not intended and was fixed in Smash Bros. Brawl. The Samus Trophy says her first appearance was in 1989, but Metroid on the NES first launched in Japan three years earlier in 1986. In the Spanish version of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, there's a text line that says weaklings should stay home and play Super Smash Bros. Melee. Super Smash Bros. Melee was the first game many of the characters appeared in a teen-rated game. The announcer for Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Pat Cashman, was also the announcer for Bill Nye the Science Guy. If you zoom into Pokemon Stadium during the ice transformation and look inside this little hut, you can see a picture of Sakurai's cat. Seven characters have incomplete files in the code of Smash Bros. Brawl, leading many to assume they were intended to be in the game at some point, but were ultimately cut. They were dubbed by the community, the Forbidden Seven. These characters included Roy, Mewtwo, and Dr. Mario, who were characters from Melee, and Dixie Kong, Toon Zelda, Toon Sheik, and Plus Old Minin as supposed newcomers. The characters from Melee would eventually all return for Smash 4, while the newcomers would never make the cut. I guess everyone isn't here after all. Wolf, Toon Link, and Jigglypuff do not appear in Subspace Emissary because they were almost cut from the final game's roster and didn't have time to put them into the plot. This is also why Sonic appears at the very end, because he was also added very late in development. In Brawl, there's a feature called Masterpieces, which lets you play demos from across Nintendo's library. Every game would have a set time limit you could play before kicking you out. Players took this as a challenge to try and beat the games, and even speedrun them. The most famous of them all is the Ocarina of Time Brawl Masterpiece speedrun, which uses so many unfathomable glitches that you just have to see it to believe it. There's an unused fighter select screen within Brawl called Slip Space, which would have been used to play Wi-Fi battles with anyone across the internet. The Primit's face changes every time you boot into Subspace Emissary. The Pikachu from Brawl might actually be the Pichu from Melee. Let me explain. In Brawl, Pikachu's final smash is Volt Tackle, which might not sound weird at first, but when you take into account that Pikachus can only learn Volt Tackle as a Pichu, and the Pikachu in Brawl also wears the goggles the Pichu in Melee had, I think there's a very high possibility that this might actually be true. Sakurai acted out the Subspace Emissary cutscenes to show animators exactly what he wanted them to look like. There's an unused teal Luigi costume in Brawl's files. In Melee and Brawl, you can move around the screen and the menus by tilting the C-Stick. Brawl, unlike the other games, went for more of a realistic aesthetic when making the game, going for less colorful yet more detailed textures. The longest work of English literature is a Subspace Emissary fanfiction that comes in at a total of 4 million plus words. The Mario Circuit stage is actually fully modeled out even though you can only see it from a certain angle. Sakurai actually denied villagers inclusion in Brawl because he thought he wasn't suited for battle. Sakurai was really upset that Subspace Emissary's cutscenes ended up being re-uploaded to the internet, and so Adventure Mode was not made for Smash 4. If you dash and brawl, there's a 1% chance you'll trip. Iwata announced a new Smash game on the Wii without even asking Sakurai if he would direct it. After the announcement, Iwata talked to him personally and asked Sakurai if he'd direct the game. And if Sakurai refused, they would just port Melee with online capabilities. You can actually destroy Fox and Falco's Landmaster, but it's extremely hard to do. Ice Climbers were cut from Smash 4 due to hardware limitations with the 3DS. If you bought both Smash for Wii U and 3DS during a three-month window after the game's release and had a Club Nintendo account, you would get a free Smash soundtrack CD featuring 36 songs from both games. You would also get Mewtwo's DLC for free. Smash for Wii U is the only game in which Jigglypuff is unlocked from the start. There's an unused character file on the Smash for Wii U disc called Rhythm. Some people think that this means a Rhythm Fever character might have actually been in development but was scratched at some point, but that's just all speculation. Each fighter has a unique nickname that displays on the Jumbotron of the boxing ring stage. Some of my favorites are the BMI Bandit, the Ramen Bomber, and Scoundrel with a Fart of Gold. If you didn't recognize some of these, that's because many were actually changed for PAL regions to fit how those countries view them. If you listen to the Master Core theme and wait through the 1 minute and 53 seconds of silence, you'll hear Morse code which translates to Master Core.
Toon Link is usually the only one driving the Spirit Train stage on the 3DS, but when someone is actually fighting as Toon Link, the driver changes to Alfonso. Smash 4 and Ultimate's result screen uses the character select theme from Smash 64. In Smash 3DS, there's actually a glitch that can get you the Big Yoshi. All you gotta do is go to the Multi-Man Smash and fight the Big Yoshi as Yoshi. If you eat him, he'll grow a little bigger. Feed him again, he'll grow even bigger. And if you eat him again, he'll grow even bigger. This goes on and on and on to the point where it'll become so big that it'll just touch the boundaries of the stage and die. After collecting every Mi outfit in Smash 4, you'll get a notification saying, collected every type of custom outfit. My body is ready. This is a reference to Reggie's iconic Wii Fit quote. Body, my body is ready. <laughs> Jigglypuff was actually shiny in the first three games, having green eyes instead of blue. In 2015, Nintendo ran a Smash ballot that allowed players to vote which characters they'd like to see come to Smash. The winner of the ballot was Bayonetta, and she was promptly added to Smash. Well, sort of. You see, the real winner was revealed to actually be Sora in the final Smash reveal in October 2021. Supposedly, Nintendo didn't want to reveal the true winner of the ballot back in 2015, so fans wouldn't get mad at the companies of the true winners. Smash 4 was the first and only game to include custom moves. Amiibos were announced alongside the release of Smash 4. Because of the low stocking of certain characters, it became extremely popular to not only collect them, but scalp them. This definitely cooled down in later waves and releases, but the Amiibo mania sure was in full swing for a couple months. Orbital Gate Assault took over a year to make. If Lil Mac obtains 100 damage, bruises and tape will appear on his face. Smash for Wii U released in Japan on Satoru Iwata's 55th birthday. There are over 82 fighters in Smash Ultimate, but if you include all the Echo Fighters in the count, there's actually 88. Yoshi's new Final Smash in Ultimate, Yoshi Stampede, is actually a callback to this shot from Melee's opening cutscene. Luigi, Greninja, and Kazuya are the only characters in the game to have a taunt that can deal damage. While looking like a 2D sprite, Mr. Game & Watch actually has a 3D model. Because of this, a shot from the Z-axis in Sephiroth's final smash shows him from this hideous 3D form. Min Min was chosen as the ARMS representative because the ARMS producer Kusuke Yubuki personally requested she be added in. The Sheikah text on the Great Plateau stage translates to Smash Bros. Smash Ultimate is the only game in the series to build off its predecessor's mechanics, rather than just starting from scratch. This decision was made so they wouldn't have to cut any character due to time constraints, and so they could focus on other aspects of the game. Inkling takes damage when they're in water, just like how they do in Splatoon. This is also the case for Charizard, Incineroar, and Sonic. The Minecraft World soundtrack is taken from the spin-offs Minecraft Dungeons and Earth, because the devs thought the ambient music from Minecraft was too relaxing for a fighting game. Smash Ultimate soundtrack has 1,068 tracks, and clocks in at a total of 28 hours. Nintendo actually leaked the Stage Builder update for Smash Bros. Ultimate a day before it dropped, because it appeared in the background of the commercial. Snake's series logo is changed from the exclamation point logo from the Fox logo in Brawl to avoid any issues with Kojima Productions. Ultimate's character selection starts with just the original 8 from Smash 64. Cappy appears in Mario's side taunt, as well as his up special. In Ultimate, you actually pick the stage you'll be playing on first, and then pick the character, unlike the other games in which it's reversed. Kirby was the only one not taken out by Galeem at the beginning of World of Light. You start out as him and have to unlock new characters throughout the game. It's theorized that Kirby was chosen as the starting fighter of World of Light because he was created by Sakurai. The Animal Crossing stage's time of day is based on the time set on your Switch. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to check out this Kirby 100 Facts video right here. And yes, that thumbnail is not clickbait. Go enjoy! Bye!